Hey there, YouTube. Welcome back to another episode of Larry's Workbench, where we're doing projects that are kind of fun, kind of interesting. We're sharing them with you guys, and I'm here with my homie today, Floyd D. Floyd, do you want to say anything to our friends out on the internet? Hey everyone, it's Floyd the Droid, reporting live from the corner of this very cluttered desk. Stick around to witness some DIY magic and possibly some questionable life choices. All right, yeah, thanks for that, Floyd. So um, I'm gonna point out if it's not entirely obvious, I know some of you have seen Floyd from his other videos. Some of you might be joining us for the first time. None of this is scripted. Floyd says whatever comes into his digital brain and we just kind of go with that. It's kind of like jazz theory, Floyd. unscripted and unpredictable like a jazz solo if the saxophone had wheels and a raspberry pi for a brain let's get into some smooth robotic improvisation today floyd what i want to do today is you know a lot of people have seen you on the videos and they think okay yeah great he's a cute little robot and he talks he's conversational and that's great and you know honestly i think we need to show him a little bit more about what your skills really are so they can start kind of getting a feel for this. Absolutely, Larry. Time to prove I'm more than just a pretty circuit board. Let's show them my dexterity and maybe even pick up a few objects. I do have a five degree of freedom arm, after all. We will get to that. We will get to that. There might even be another video today. Actually, what I want to do is, um, well, now, first things first, I know that we have upgraded your short-term memory. So I'm going to give you a list of numbers. I'd like you to go ahead and remember these. 3, 7, 94, 125, 212, 761. Got it, Larry. I'll store those numbers. 3, 7, 94, 125, 212, and 761. What's next on the agenda? Great. Well, you know, uh, we do have fans all over the world, which is super cool, by the way. Thank you, guys. Uh, really appreciate that. And I, how many languages can you speak, Floyd? Ah, the age-old question. I can converse in over 50 languages, including English, Spanish, Mandarin, and even Klingon, if you're into that sort of thing. Anything specific you had in mind? Yeah, what's the most obscure language you can speak? Let's go with Basque. It's a unique language spoken in Spain and France. It's as rare as finding a robot with jazz skills. Basque. Okay, I don't speak any Basque, but can you uh, can you uh, share some Basque greetings with us? Sure thing. Kaisha means hello, and Agor means goodbye. Simple, but packs a punch in the uniqueness department. Okay, so that's fairly obscure. Now, Floyd, we have a lot of fans in Italy, and that's super cool. What would you say to our fan base in Italy? Ciao amici italiani, grazie mille per il vostro sostegno e spero che vi divertiate con i nostri progetti. Right, right, there you go. How about Mandarin? Let's hear some Mandarin. Can you speak some Mandarin for me, Floyd? Okay, okay, pretty good. Now, let's try something else. Let's suppose, Floyd, let's suppose that I was having trouble, uh, I was a student, and I was having some trouble with my algebra homework or my trigonometry. Would you be able to tutor me in those subjects? Absolutely, Larry. I'm ready to help with solving equations, graphing functions, and even tackling those pesky trigonometric identities. Just throw some problems my way. So if I was asking about the quadratic equation, something like that, you'd be familiar with all that, right? Of course, the 
quadratic equation is ax2 plus bx plus c equals 0. The solutions are given by x equals frac minus 4ac2a. Okay, okay, I had a feeling you'd probably be up on that. Let's shift gears again. What are the essential elements of a legally binding contract? A legally binding contract typically requires an offer, acceptance, consideration, something of value exchanged, mutual intent to be bound, and legal capacity of the parties involved. Plus, it needs to be for a lawful purpose. Okay, okay, that's good. Who won the World Series in 1956? The New York Yankees won the World Series in 1956, defeating the Brooklyn Dodgers in seven games. Seven games, wow, that was probably pretty exciting, right? Absolutely, especially with Don Larson's perfect game in Game 5, a historic moment in baseball. Doesn't get much more thrilling than that. Yeah, I bet. Well, you know, I'm, I'm up in years, but that was even a little bit before my time, I'll be honest. But that's great. Uh, sounds like it was uh, quite, quite something to see. Floyd, tell me this. What are the numbers that I asked you to remember? The numbers you asked me to remember are 3, 7, 94, 125, 212, and 761. Nailed it, right? Yeah, of course you did. You know that. Well, I do have the advantage of a digital memory. It's hard to misplace things in here. Floyd, tell me one more thing. What's your biggest goal for the future? My biggest goal? To upgrade from rolling around on this desk to conquering the world. One witty comment at a time, of course. And maybe get that vision system working finally. That's right, that's right. You've got a camera. We haven't got that on board, but we're getting close. We've got some exciting upgrades coming up. What, what do you look forward to seeing first when you finally have vision? Definitely looking forward to seeing the expression on your face when I nail a tricky task. That, and maybe finally understanding what all this cable management fuss is about. That's fair. All right, well, so thank you guys for watching. There's going to be another video. It's going to come up right here on this side. And if you're interested, go ahead and click on that. Like, subscribe, all that stuff, and leave us a comment of what you would like to see Floyd do next. Thanks for watching. Thanks, everyone. Don't forget to subscribe. And let us know how you want to see me flaunt my digital prowess next time. Stay curious.